what's not board game news now before we get into everything i got old man logan i got old man logan i've got the other expansions that i missed for the most part on marvel x-men united i still have my pledge that's a whole nother situation because i'm in the second version second cargo container whatever but that's aside the point you're not here for my tales of board game woes and yays and nays you're here for the board game news everything you need to know that's come out recently everything that's of interest and everything that might be on your watch list wish list or hotness so let's just get right into it speaking of hotness as a bald guy i made the bald guy pale guy ultimate sin i coached soccer without wearing a hat or sunscreen never again never again this summer let's do this in no particular order, we're going to start with Fantasy Flight Games Arkham Horror Files. In case you don't know where I'm going with this, the Arkham Horror LCG card game is getting a new expansion, the Scarlet Keys. What does that mean? I have no idea, but look at those red pretty boxes, right? I'm assuming there's some mythos behind that. And if you really want to know, you can head over to the Arkham Horror LCG as they give you a little bit of background into the mythos of whatever the Congress of the Keys is was henby you know all of that they've got a whole bunch of stuff running back here or if you're just like me you like the cool purple reddish box i mean if you're like me you don't have the previous edge of the world expansions anyway and you haven't gotten yours to play at the table uh you know you can probably pass on this but you know sounds cool so you know there you go first up first up hey, let's just you know what let's just stay with expansions here trogdor Trogdor, the tile laying Carcassonne esque game crowdfunded in the Home Runner stead, now has an expansion pack that came out of nowhere. Not only can you get it from the Home Runner store website, you can also get it from Greater Than Games. It's the Magics and Emergencies Expando deck. No, I didn't slang that. That's the actual name of it. New gameplay, new cards, more options for players, and more, of course what everybody always needs, chaotic burnination. Again, I'm not making these words up. These are not liege words. These are actual, you know, Homestar Runner words. If you're not familiar, go check it out. It's a whole early 2000s thing. And if you really want more details, you scroll down here, you get emergency cards that can be used on anyone's turn to get Trogdor out of some tight jams, spell cards to complete mini quests, and brand new action cards to add more variety to what you can actually do. Obviously, it's an expansion, so you need the base game. There you go. Now, what else do we have? Next up, Flat Out Games has announced that iMandu Games is putting out a version, a different version, uh, maybe their goal with the love letter uh, re-theming every year or so, of Point Salad. The 2021 Spiel Recommended Hand Management Card Drafting, Open Drafting Card Game. And so, I mean, do you need an Eevee version of it? No, but is it going to appeal more than say, generic vegetables do to the average gamer? Right? Probably. Again, another good entry point. Another good game getting a good retheme. Because, I mean, this is not going to win my kids over. However, this definitely would. Sticking with the rethemes, before I talk about more expansions, let's go over here and let's see what Days of Wonder has for us. What is that, Alan R. Moon? Alan R. Moon... A new Ticket to Ride version? Huh. Well, where are we going this time? We're going to San Francisco. What does San Francisco have for us that the other places don't? Well, here's your board. A little bit of a smaller area, a little bit of a smaller board. Definitely not nearly as long a routes. You have double routes, you have ferries, and you have tourist destinations and the tourist destinations allow you to take a tourist from one of those destinations when you connect to them to move up along the tourist tracker tokens and then based on how many you have at the end you will get some sort of set collection-esque point scoring on top of the route points you're going to get does that appeal to you do you need another ticket to ride i mean not that they're bad but I find that most of the time one of them suits you well enough and I don't always need a bunch of others, but that's okay. This is a new one. It's got a different theme. It's a different place. It's got something else going on and there's everything you need to know in the two page rule book right there. And you will say about that. That's, that is the nice thing about these games. Now, what else do we got? Go back to expansions, role player adventures, nothing confirmed on the website, but I was on the Twitterverse the other day and they were talking about 
a new expansion for role player adventures is going to be coming out in the future. So if you were a fan of the first one, a seal of excellence holder of games, one to four players, role player, but done in a more of a campaign, dice rolling ask RPG building scenario. I use that very loosely, of course, because role player is, you know, basically Sagrada as D&D mixed together, but not D&D fighting, mostly D&D creating your character. Now, this takes your character out in adventures and skill checks and things like that. But if you were a fan, well, there's more coming out. Now, no timetable whatsoever, but just to put it on your horizon, if you really were a big fan in the first place, there you go. Now, what else do we have following in the footsteps of the same universes? Well, funny you mentioned that. Well, here's Oath, in case it's not clear what page I'm on. Oath, the Chronicles of Empire and Exile. Now, we will be seeing arcs in just under two weeks. Just over two weeks. Ah, whatever. Close enough. And you're getting into... What's going on with Oath? Oh, not the votes, but this last little paragraph right here. We are in the early stages of designing an expansion. Other projects taking up most of the bandwidth. But stay tuned for another couple months and maybe we'll have some more for you at that time. Bless your heart, Cole. Let's go, Leader Games. Keep pumping them out. We're going to keep going after them. I mean, right back there, right? Now, that's apparently the theme I'm going for. Expansions and uh, continuing in similar universes uh, this week. Uh, not by design, but by uh, just what's out there. KTBG has just announced recently, uh, set in the Creature Comforts world, if you're familiar with their latest release that everyone has a smash hit enjoyment of as a very intro worker placement game that is family oriented and family friendly, very much so, but keeping at least somewhat entertained those who are looking for a robust worker placement. I'm not going to say crunchy. I'm not going to say deep. I'm not going to say super strategic, but it's it's a nice one and people seem very happy with it. Now they're going back to this universe and they're doing set collection hand management. You are going out and foraging, trying to make up for all that time spent into winter digging, running, crawling to various areas or locations, trying to get all supplies, resources, and food that you can. One to five players foraging, trying to build the best feast you can. No info on Board Game Geek otherwise, no timetable, but I have to imagine this is probably going to be one of their upcoming, if not the next, Kickstarter from KTBG, who is putting out very solid, very family-friendly oriented games. And if you're like me, you have to be tempted by them I passed on the other one because I'm not a worker placement, but color me this. Again, they're deluxifications as well, so price point, be warned. There you go. Now, going over to other things in the same realm. Unmatched. Unmatched is getting a digital edition sometime before the end of June because it says it's coming in quarter two. And that's about all we know. Now, coming soon, again, quarter two is what I saw. Quarter two is what it is released here. So... That's all you need to know. If you had trouble getting something like this to the table, well, now no worries because you can do it digitally across with a partner anywhere else in the world. Does that sound good to you? Restoration Games, putting it out there. In addition to the latest Marvel releases, uh, it's just going to be another question of what else we see. Obviously, the Jurassic Park with Malcolm. The Malcolm miniature is making all the waves on the hotness as well. That's a whole other one. I'm going to let you Google that one. It's it's not quite uh, NSFW, but uh, he's laying there with... anyway. Uh, You can look it up yourself. And that's it. So where else are we going within the same universes? Well, this one's going to surprise you a little bit. We're going over to Wise Wizard Games. And this is a little bit interesting because we'll close that window. But what we're talking about here, in case you can't read the small text, is we're going back to Star Realms. And not only are we going back to Star Realms, Star Realms is putting out a legacy version. Now, depending on how you feel about that, you take on the role as either the Trade Federation or the Empire. I think it's those two factions. I'm not totally familiar, but I watched some of the video beforehand. And you actively recruit other factions as you were going along from the buy pile in the first place, trying to recruit them to your side, trying to engage them, trying to just do all legacy games do, right? And so what else is going to do it? But it changes the gameplay of what you're gonna be doing. I mean, it's a legacy game. More details, you can check it out in 12 minute video from the designers, Uh, gives you a little bit more background on how these things are gonna change and what you're gonna be looking at here. We'll blow it up and see, you can see a little bit of your usual buy cost effect but obviously there's going to be some changes along here too. 
We'll see if we can pull it up here and see if we can see any others. I mean, they run through a few of the cards you're going to be seeing, uh, some of the mechanics that you're going to be seeing, and just, again, some of the glimpses into what is going to be there. Interested? I never was a big Star Realms person, but Legacy always has a certain ring to it, especially in my ears, so I'll have my ear to the ground for you, if nothing else. Now, a few weeks ago, we talked about Rainer's latest upcoming Legacy game, staying in the Legacy theme. It's almost like I planned this. I swear, I do not do this in any order. I randomly click tabs as we do this video, so uh, I'm just that lucky, I guess. We talked about My Island, the sequel to My City, the Legacy sort of tile-laying building game. And now, there's a My City, but it's My City Roll and Write. Interesting, right? I didn't actually mean that pun. Four chapters, three rounds each, various challenges and difficulties you're going to face in the construction of your, well, city as you play. Now it has it out in German when you go to Cosmos's website. I believe it's German. We'll assume I'm right on this one. But I don't know if there's actually an English release date yet for this one. But intriguing enough that... Again, My City is a game that's been on my radar, but not every one that I wanted to pick up, as I have too many other Legacies that I haven't played. I'm about 10 years behind on the Legacy scheme of things, so eventually maybe I'll get there. But My Island personally has more appeal, so I may just skip and go right to that. But there you go, so you know. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go over to what's on the hotness right now. And why is it on the hotness, and what do you need to know about it, and just anything else to go along with it. First up, we're going to talk about Gloomholden. In case you missed it, I talked about this probably a year ago when it came out. All of a sudden, sprung out of nowhere. It is the 18-card Shy Button Game-esque game, card game, that needs very little space, table, or otherwise in order to play your essential one- to two-player version of Gloomhaven. And it was nominated for a Golden Geeky? I don't know. what, Whatever they're called. Board and Game Geek Golden Geek Awards Geeks Golden Things. And I think it won for best print and play. So that's why it's on the hotness. It's on the people's radar. Um, I believe it's endorsed by uh, Isaac Childress now. So I think, I mean, it's, you know, he was kind of like, hey, cool. Good job, I think. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Next up, Euthia. I mean, I'm going to have a video out later this week talking about this realm of things. Not the Euthia realm, but the Euthia, what's going on it. And rest in peace. Uh, Daia Games, we don't know what's going to be going on with them, if they're actually truly going to shut down completely, and if Euthia is ever going to be on anyone else's uh, buy list in the future, or the ability to buy, or not, or if it's going to be temporary, or if someone else is going to pick them up and try and get this printed elsewise. But it's definitely an interesting conversation topic, without spoiling my video too much. It definitely goes into shipping, freight, and deluxifications, and expectations, all in one. And it's gonna make some waves no matter what and it's gonna be interesting to see how these waves have a butterfly effect on the rest of the industry yeah i went there butterfly effect ashton kutcher ashton kutcher's a really cool guy butterfly effect eh, it's kind of a weird movie anyway so what else Ra, Ra. my review of Ra is out it's like seven minutes you can totally watch it or not uh, the Game Found campaign is going on for the new edition with the O'Toole version of the art for Ra. So if you missed it the first time around, you can get the deluxe version. If you're not going to get the deluxe version, as always, you can usually better off get the retail version later. 25th Century Games, though, doing a stellar job. Ian O'Toole, amazing. It looks amazing. And, I mean, it's a classic that now a lot more people are going to be able to get. And so I would assume when people get this in a year or so, it's going to shoot back up and sort of... Uh, Go back up the Board Game Geek rankings where it deserves because it's sort of been slowly falling out of the top 200. So there is Ra Arcs, my video from last week where I talked about Arcs possibly being my most hyped Kickstarter of 2022 because I still don't have a date for Sanko Cushion. And so Arcs is potentially, as we were talking about Oath earlier, the successor to Oath, but more accessible, if that makes sense, if you followed me there with a three campaign game session, potentially, maybe even one, but more beginning end, as if you imagine Root, as the asymmetry is already there between all the factions, it's been established, it's, you know, entrenched. Oath, it's kind of there, but it's, you know, it's take that, it's cards, it's magic, whatever, abilities, uh, crazy things going on left and right and center. And Arcs is just roots only getting actually to establish and make your own asymmetry in this space 
bearing game, depending on what's given to you, depending on how you want to do it, a sixth spot of building in the first place where you're going to be able to improve your technology tree, but not branch it out, but just consolidate it into six different things that you can be doing at all times. And how do you want to allocate that? And are you playing the long game? Are you playing the short game? Are you playing something in between? over those three sessions until the final end game in the final session. Because even if you lose the first two and don't win the first two, you can come back from behind and win in the third somehow. So I did a whole video on what we know about it, breaking down the designer diaries last week. Check it out if you want, link above. Next up, Age of Steam Deluxe Edition, uh, 13 new expansion maps in case you need that many. They are going up currently on Kickstarter for about $96 or so. So if you're a big Age of Steam fan, if you love Choo Choo, then you should check this one out. Now, again, my objection is, or my thought is, uh, you know, if you're going to compare this to anything, it reminds me more of a Simon game. Uh, I don't need uh, 150 miniatures, but there we go. I've got them sitting on my shelf behind the camera with Marvel United. And I look at that sort of like that, or even Portal Games with their 50 different scenarios for Robinson Crusoe saying, do you really need that many? No, but do we like feeling reassured and we can hug it in our beds tightly and feel warm and comfort because we've got that many? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So Age of Steam is doing that now just with maps. And last up, we have Wonderland's War. Skybound Games' latest one uh, is finally being fulfilled. Actually, this isn't the last one up. I have a few others just like this. Wonderland's War, area control, bag building, probably going to be a top 10 game of the year on a lot of people's lists. I'll tell you this right now. And Skybound Games just put out on... I think it was Friday, that they have some extra copies on their website. So if you missed it or you missed the deluxe versions, you can now go over there and get them before time or really more supplies run out. It's Alice in Wonderland meets area control meets take that meets bag building quacks Nita Velier all wrapped up in one a little bit less Nita Velier more quacks if you will and if that doesn't appeal to you well that's cool too but it's an awesome game my thoughts later when I get a chance to actually review it. Speaking of Kickstarters being delivered and the hype being hotnessed, this is Planet Unknown. This is a polyominal simultaneous game for I believe one to six maybe one to five. Nope, I was right, one to six players, where you are simultaneously terraforming and building your own planet using said polyominoes. Now, it's all the rage because Kickstarter backers are getting it, and they have pretty deluxe versions with inlays and multi-layer boards and deluxe resources. But if you want just the regular version, there's not a whole lot of gameplay exclusive, so it's really just a deluxification. And people are saying it is potentially one of their favorite polyomino games out there so far and I believe it also just got the dice tower seal of excellence I'm actually speaking of seals of excellence I'm actually wearing my uh pair of excellence underneath this shirt right now the shut up and sit down pair that shirt I got that on you can't see it probably but whatever and so uh this is just in line with that and so it's definitely getting the rage right now but uh you know what I might be just happy with the retail version if I can end up with a copy or maybe I'll trade for the deluxe but the uh, deluxe version, I think, was offering or running somewhere between like $90 and $100 post-campaign on the website. So it's not cheap, but if it is up your ilk and you want a little deluxe to go along with it, you can still get it, I believe. Next up, we have Foundations of Rome. Speaking about over-deluxifications, holy cow. This was a Kickstarter, I don't know, like a year, year and a half, probably year and a half to two years ago now at this point. Arcane Wonders was like, hey, you want to build a city, my city? This is how you build a city. I mean, look at that board behind. I don't think you can really appreciate the scale and the size of this thing. I think people are talking something like the box being twice the size of Gloomhaven, essentially. And these are huge plastic miniatures. When tiles would have sufficed, they said, I need bigger plastic than any other game that's been put out there. Think era medieval, only in thinking of it instead of that, thinking about making it like, full-size miniatures for every single piece if era medieval did that and then trying to build your city that's essentially what you're doing as you're trying to basically be the architect of rome to score the most victory points now this is being marketed as the next in the line of the dice tower essentials and i would say as someone who owns a ton of excess non-essential plastic this is in that line of definitely non-essential so give me a version that's 30 or 40 dollars not 150 or 200 i'll be more than willing to play it but also, I mean, come on. Arcane Wonders. Your new name is uh, Simon Jr.? Come on. Anyway, I mean, again, 
are, what do you want to bling? I mean, that's really the message here with some of these games. What are you okay with blinging and what aren't you okay with blinging? And again, it's going to my video uh, that I'll talk about later with Uthia. Is this sustainable with this level of deluxification? It's a very interesting concept, but it's a whole nother video. Speaking of games that are being delivered, Perseverance Castaway Chronicles, episodes one and two, because three and four are coming later in a couple of years, but this is from Mind Clash. This is the latest Mind Clash game, way too heavy for me. I believe it's a worker placement as well, and you can not only play against each other, but you can play against the game itself as a solo version, and if you are interested, I'm going to let you go over to the Board Game Geek link, and you can check it out and see how heavy it is, because until Septima comes out, Mind Clash is going to be too heavy for me, but Septima, their next one that I talked about in the last video two weeks ago, that one... I am going to be all over like like something that really likes to be on a cool game. I don't know. I'm not going to say any analogies there. You know where I'm going, though. So there you go. God, my face is really starting to burn. I am really irritated at myself for messing this up. Uh, but apart from that, um, there you go. What news interests you? Did I miss stuff? Do you have stuff out there that um, you're interested in that I should be talking about? Uh, again, my email is down below. Welcome to email me. I have a Patreon down below. Uh, I have a Facebook page even now, sending messages back and forth on all of sorts of those things. So, you know, you can always get in contact with me. I love doing this. One of these times, if you guys actually start responding, I'd love to do another Q&A video. Because the last Q&A video I made with the news was me just making up questions and uh, pretending they were from people with bad made up fake names. So, you know, if I got real questions, that would be even better about my collection, about games I'm interested in, what's on my wish list, what's on my playlist. What do you want to see? Let me know. I'm open. Shoot it down below. That's all I got, man. That was always, man. I got old man Logan here. I got a Moonraker expansion. I just got a Disney game. I just got some other X-Men Marvel United expansions from local people. I got stuff to play, folks. And nobody to play it with. Ain't that the board game life? <laughs> Stay classy. I'll see you around. I'm better. Subscribe if you haven't. Smash the like. And let me know how I can treat you better and do you better and get you to tune in more often. As always, thanks for watching, though. See you around.